Uh, I think the standout theme maybe rather is um, things weren't as bad as they, everyone was anticipating. Um. Matt Felsman, welcome back to Dukascopy TV. Always a pleasure to receive you. Yeah, thanks. No worries at all. Now we're going to be taking a look back at what was a bumper week really for the banking space. What was the, the standout star for you in that earnings reports? Uh, I think the standout theme maybe rather is um, things weren't as bad as they, everyone was anticipating. Um, I mean, coming into the reports, the banking sector was down. Uh, ASX financial sector was down about 18% year to date. Uh, people were very concerned about the potential for dividend cuts, um, for the potential for uh, out of hand, bad and doubtful debts, um, exposure to you know mining and energy sectors. And, and also looming uh, in the background was the you know, the case that the banks would probably have to raise more capital again to meet their uh, regulatory uh, requirements. But, I mean, we saw Westpac report first. They uh, were down about, I think, 3 or 4% on the day they reported, back up a few days later. Uh, NAB and CBA up about 2% on the day they reported. And um, ANZ uh, was up about 4%, but uh, initially was down about 4 so quite a big intraday move there. And, yeah, the key takeaway, not as bad as everyone was really anticipating. I mean, you touched on there in terms of resources. We've got a lot of debt exposure. You know, we had ANZ lending to Dick Smith. We've got a lot of risk exposure also. In that respect, who who really ended up the worse off? Um, well, I think uh, just in regards to the bad and doubtful debts, the key takeaway or the clarity that the market received was the fact that these were largely single name problematic loans rather than sort of widespread loan um, distress. So. I mean, when you think about the, the, the likes of Arium, Slater and Gordon, Dick Smith, those type of things, um, I mean, uh, CBA had their bad and doubtful debts up from $131 million to $427 million. Um, uh, you had uh, Westpac, who had their new impairments coming in at $633 million, moving to um, just over a billion. So, look, I think moving forward, the, the takeaway as well is that, um, you know, Bad and doubtful debts increasing is really a reflection of maybe an economy sort of falling over or not holding up. And, um, you know, we've just seen the RBA lower interest rates and you would think that would be a positive for the, the second half uh, and lowering the bad and doubtful debts. Are there any comparisons to be made between the domestic banking space and also over in the US? We saw a lot of banking uh, report uh, earnings reports coming out from, from their banking space also. What, what comparisons, if any, are there to be drawn from trends within the sectors at present? So uh, over in the US, we saw the likes of uh, JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America all rise up to you know, 5% on the day they reported albeit from a very low base. Um, in you know, July 2015, the estimates for earnings per share growth were you know, well above 10%, around 12%, and they slowly got lower and lower and lowered all the way up until when the banks reported, and the earnings per share growth was, the estimate was, I think, around 2%. So when these companies reported, they largely beat expect expectations, even though they were from such a low base. But I think what we saw more so in Australia was uh, rather than a a structural um, you know, beat on estimates. It's more so a coming from a very low base as well, but um, really uh, coming from a, a level of high pessimism, which um, didn't turn out to be that bad when the results were actually you know, clarified. So what's your outlook then for shares within the banking space moving forwards? Uh, look, I think um, if you compare, say, a term deposit, uh, paying you 2 or 3% uh, interest to say something like National Australia Bank, if you were to buy that this week and hold it for the next 18 months, you would get roughly around 10% dividend yield with franking credits. So it is pretty compelling, uh, the story you know, in, in its just stark comparison there. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of Australian investors are already overexposed to financials and um, they probably uh, are, are exposed at, at, a, at a loss even as well, holding them at a loss. So I think compelling um, story short term, very, very short term, coming off a low base, interest rate cut, banks look good for um, you know, coming into their dividends and much you know, long, long term, they, they look quite good. But mid term, I think you'll see a, probably a, a period of consolidation for the next 18 months. And um, uh, yeah, not a lot of uh, maybe a, a very range bound kind of trading from the banks. Matt, thanks so much for the update. Thanks, Nat. That's all we've got time for right now. Our many thanks to Matt Felsman for his insights into shares in the banking space, both here in Australia and also with an overseas look at the US sector also. I'm Natalie MacDonald. You've been watching Sydney Direct on Dukascopy TV. Goodbye for now.